So first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and get my fender off. And that's going to start with these five half inch bolts. Somewhere around here, I have a bag to put these in. I think it's over there. Ha <laughs> ha, fender bolts. These are for the other side too. All right, next, we've got a bolt here and a bolt here. These actually come through the other side. But once again, they're half inch. And if I can get horn is in the way. So we'll go with the bottom one first. Now we get underneath and we've got a bolt here that needs to come out and a bolt here that needs to come out. And we have to disconnect this guy right here. And these bolts are our 7 16 Oh, that was loud. And of course that one's not 7 16 it's smaller. Okay, turns out this guy's 3 8 No, we don't want to tighten. There we go. More bolts for the bag. And you got these two guys right here. Now we're back to half inch. These guys were already soaked in BB Blaster, so we'll see how this works. Yep, that's about what I thought. That's what the other side did too. Snapped her clean off. Yeah, we'll figure it out. What about you? You gonna do the same thing? All right. That one came off the way it's supposed to. Ow, hot. There's all the wonderful crap that came out of there. Yummy. Now you might be thinking to yourself, self, I've got all the bolts that I can see. That means they're all out, right? Wrong. We have one more bolt and it kind of sucks to get to. Let me show you. If we open the door here. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this and get some light. Just, yeah, mash you right in there. That'll do. Is that sucker. He's really hard to get to, but we'll figure it out. Before anything else, I'm gonna hit that bad boy with some PB Blaster, cause it needs it. Oh, splurch. Yes, we're just drenching that bad boy. Now that that's soaked in, I'm gonna throw a half inch deep well with a wobbly bit on the end. See if I can't. Well, I know I can get on it, but see if I can't uh, get this thing loose. Whoa, all right. Oh no, there goes my light. We are on this bad boy. See if I can get her to turn. Oh, I feel it just a little bit. So I'm getting like two clicks out of this. And uh, yeah, we'll be back when this thing's out. All right, that'll work. We don't want to put that nasty thing on our new carpet. Now I think I've got all of these out. I should be able to get this loose. Now, whoever put it on last time, uh, definitely like put some kind of silicone sealant stuff down. So that's gonna be fun. Come on, I'm getting her loose. There's that, we're loose there. Aha, and there we are. Now we have another problem, which I was aware of, but couldn't figure out how to deal with earlier. And that's our antenna. Ew, that's nasty. You tried getting this bad boy out and that didn't work so well. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish this out through the firewall here. If you can't fish it out that way, then I'm just gonna have to go with the old snip snip. Hey, look at that. That just like unplugs from the antenna finger. Nice. Now we're just gonna go and sit this out of the way for a little bit. Now the next thing I'm looking at is uh, getting our inner fender here cut out. You can see this was patched in the past. 
uh, has some very interesting welds uh, going all the way up into the corner here. So since this thing's a little wonky, we're just gonna cut it out. If you wanna come from underneath and follow these seams, that should give us plenty of metal to weld back to when we put the new one in. Same thing on the back side here. Just wanna run it right up this seam. And I think I'm gonna bring it straight out and all the way up. And then we'll figure out uh, what we're gonna do with this whole section up here. Because our original piece has one, two, three, four, five holes. And our replacement panel has one, two, three, four holes. Here's just a tang to overlap where our fifth hole would be. So we're gonna figure this whole thing out. here. Now I just got to drill out a couple of plug welds and that inner fender will come right out. Uh-huh. Sure it will, jackass. You know what? Never mind. I have a different idea. All right, that's most of it. Looks like I got just a little bit left down here. And for that, we'll go ahead and get this bad boy in there. Ah, finger is bash my finger. All right, see a spot well there. Spot well there. We missed it. Just a couple more spot welds. I see one over here. Can we get to it from this side? Maybe. There's one. And there's the last little bit. Right there. With our inner fender out, I can actually get down here and take a look at why we're doing this in the first place. Like the whole bottom of that is gone. This is all full of crap that needs to come out. We'll get the vac in here in a minute. And then yes, just all the rusty bits, all of them. Vacuum time. Yeah, now that I got the fender off, we're gonna go ahead and take care of one little issue that these A-bodies have. And that's with the cowl here. So water comes in the cowl, runs all the way down here, and that water's supposed to come out of these drain holes right here, but they're full of gunk. So if you get your fender off, take the time, get your vacuum cleaner, suck all that crap out of there. Next up, I wanna work at getting the bits of the inner fender that are left out of the way, then we can start measuring before we cut the uh, shock tower. Yeah, that's it, before we shut, cut the shock tower out. <sighs> now I've been contemplating picking up an air hammer, but I haven't yet, so it's just gonna be a seam separating tool and a hammer. Yeah, 
I just do that all the way around, all the way up here. Alrighty, that seems to be uh, most of our extra bits and bobs. We seem to have uh, chewed this bad boy up pretty good. We'll have to take a hammer and dolly to that and get that straightened out. So go ahead and get this as uh, cleaned up as a can for now. That way it can start getting some reference measurements. So the first reference measurement that I want to take is this angle right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make myself a jig. Take this half inch rod. Ah, and run it all the way through. And that's in there pretty tight. So I can take these brackets and put them through at each end. I'm gonna have to re-drill the holes because the holes are drilled for the driver's side. So now my holes are drilled. I can actually take them and run them through to find a spot where it lines up. We've got good, good alignage. Ah, we clamp it in place. And then we mark on the frame where the edge of that bad boy goes. Same thing here. You take this end, kind of slide it back, clamp that in place. I've actually already marked this one. You need to wallow that out just a little bit. There's a little bit of flashing on here that's causing some interference. There we go, D-Bird. Let's see how that works now. There we go. That's what I want. I want it to be able to move freely. Oh, there it is. I was like, ow, where'd my other pliers go? Now, now it can move freely. That's my jig. I've got this set up. So I'm just gonna go back and mark these again. Nice and dark. With the marks on the frame, I can actually pull these off and they'll go back in the same spot when I go and put the new piece in. This angle here is probably, in my opinion, the first most important measurement that you need to take is, the, uh, is locating these. The second is the top of your shock tower. This is where your shock comes up through. So I'm actually gonna take some measurements in the X, the Y, and the Z and we'll see what we come up with. So I wanna find a spot as a reference mark. So I'm gonna use this, uh, it's a brake line clamp, the very tip top of that. I'll line that up right there and look and see what I've got. I have one, two, three, four, five, 12 and five sixteenths. So next thing I need to do is find something to go from here to over there. So I'm thinking now that my other side is welded in, I can actually just go from this lip here to the lip. Inside is 32 and a half. So from my shock tower to driver's side inner fender, that should be an eye, is 32 and a half. So the last measurement that I want to take is on the Z axis. So I want to go from here and I would say I want to go to this mark right here, but um, there's a problem with that in that I'm going to cut this off and this and this because as you can see, we're going to end up having to patch the frame rail itself. So where do I go to? <laughs> the floor. We're looking at right at 33 inches. So with my jig built, my measurements taken, it's time to get this bad boy cut out. Go ahead and remove our jig now that it's marked. So I'm gonna do something similar with this to what I did to the inner fender, is I'm just gonna cut her flush.
I almost forgot a thing. We need to figure out right about where this is gonna go. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but I just kind of want to line these up front and back. And make myself a mark right here. <laughs> All right, now I got a general idea where I need to cut on the frame. We go ahead and get the rest of this out. I think we're gonna need a fresh cutting wheel. Now with that bad boy gone, we can get a little better look at the rot that's going on in here. And get this crap out. This right here, this is what causes all this rot. This is dirt and mud that just gets packed up in here. Hopefully we can prevent that in the future by not driving it in the rain. And before I get going too much further in here, I need to go ahead and mark the position of these and then cut them off. Now I'm hoping that this template that I made for the other side will get the job done without having to make another one. And see if it fits. Well, would you look at that? I believe the proper term here is uh, good enough. Again, let's not talk with the cap in our mouth. So again, I'll take my Sharpie and I'll place a mark. It will let me know where my template goes. Do the same on the back side. Now I can go ahead and cut off those three pieces and then we can get to patching up this chewy, chewy frame rail. I just noticed this, that it is a mouse house. We're gonna have to clean that out too, especially before we start welding, cause yeah. Fire bad. There we go. Want to go? All right, that's done. Hey, you're saying to yourself, dude, you chewed that frame rail all up. Yes, yes, I did. Why? Because. I'm gonna patch it anyway. It is break time. Fat kid needs water. Yeah, so my phone died. I'm gonna let it charge. And uh, while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and get that frame rail ready for patching. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Yay! Phone's back. So we went ahead and got this top portion cut out and I'm about ready to weld this piece in here. There. Helps if you actually turn the camera on, doofus. Tack welds in place. I want to go ahead and burn the rest of this in. Yeah. Oh, fat guy in a little space. 
Yeah. I got it welded in. I'm gonna trim off the excess to make it even across the top, hopefully. Now that trimmed down, we can drop this in here and see exactly where we need to trim out for this tab right here. All right, looks like about here and about there. And we drop this down in here and looks like we need just a little more. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit off the bottom of this yet. We're gonna use the grinding wheel for that. So once we burn this whole thing in, we're gonna go ahead and weld all the way around this tab. So we'll weld the frame rail onto the tab. Looks like I might need a little more trimming down right there. But for the most part, it's coming along okay. Where'd my hat go? There it is, better. Now, I just need to get my front frame rail patch piece cut out. And we'll do the same thing and cut out for these three tabs. So after much cutting and trimming and cutting and trimming and cutting and trimming, we have finally got this thing to a point where we can get her burned in. So I'm gonna put a spot weld there and a spot weld there in each corner. And then we'll line up the rest of this as we go. Yeah. My welding's getting better, but it still sucks. All right, here's how it's gonna go. There, corner, other corner. And now I need this guy and we can work our way across take you down so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. she looks rough but oh that's hot don't do that <laughs> we grabbed it it's still really hot but yeah I mean it's nice and strong it definitely warped but we'll do what we did with the other side Now that we got those notches cut out, let's go ahead and get our jig back in and get this thing set up. The easiest way I've found to do this is to put my back brace in first. There we go. Run the post in, kind of sit that guy in place. <laughs> I hit that thing with a hammer earlier and now it's flared out. And I can't get, can't get the motherfucker on. Here we go. Just give that a little bevel. Now, will you go in? You will, yes. <gasps> now, we can actually start taking measurements. We can rock this back and forth till it is where it needs to be and all of our measurements match. Now I've got it all clamped in. 
I'm gonna go ahead and check my measurements. My first one being across, that should be 32 and a half. And we are right at 32 and a half. Here from the wall, we are at 12 and 3 sixteenths. And before we were at 12 and 5 sixteenths. Our hole to the floor, we are again right about 33 inches. So it's in the right spot, uh, or very close to. Um, I'm sure we can give it a little nudge here and there. I'm good this way. I got two sixteenths of an inch this way that this wants to go that way, but I don't have any more space to move forward. I am right where I need to be with my jig. So now I just need to pull this all back apart and make myself some holes for some spot welds. We're also gonna weld basically just fill that whole thing in. I know I probably shouldn't do that, but I'm gonna. Same on the back here. I'm actually probably gonna trim this down just a little bit more to give me the same space that I've got here and here and uh, be able to close this distance and then drill some spot weld holes. And now we put it all back together again and take the measurements again to make sure everything's right again. Now I find my 32 and a half. There we go. Sitting at 32 and a half. We clamp you down. And we clamp you down. And we're still at 32 and a half. We're at 12 and I'm right between 3 sixteenths and a quarter. So I was at 5 sixteenths earlier. I can deal with that. Ah, there we are. Now, check again. 32 and a half, 12 and a quarter. So this is a 16th of an inch further that way than it was before, but this still lines up the way it's supposed to. That's the right distance. If I go from here to the floor, I'm at 33. I am content with being off by a 16th of an inch in one axis. It's time to get this thing burned in. Ooh, that's hot, yep. Right in the nibbly bits. That's one side down. Gotta go ahead and take my measurements again, just cause you know, hot, metal expands, things move. Still at 32 and a half, still at 12 and a quarter, and still at 33. I am happy with that. Let's get this finished. And now our backside is all done too. I am pretty happy with how that all came out. Now I just gotta get my welds cleaned up and my uh, little bits that need to go back on here. Then I'll be ready to get this inner fender put back in. So I'm gonna do all that cleanup and putting the parts back on the frame rail off camera. Now, if you want to see more about this fantastic dart and where we've gone to to this point, check out this video right here. Peace out.